Good morning, genealogy friends. How are you this Wednesday? I hope that you are doing well. Today we're going to be talking about convex bubble glass portraits, which are a reasonably <clears throat> common thing for people to have in their family history. We're going to talk about what they are, you know, identifying them, repairing them, and then how on earth do you get this bubble portrait into your notebook and also what do you do about storage because the thing about bubble portraits is that if you're not planning on hanging it they're kind of a pain in the neck so we're going to be talking today about what do you do with convex bubble glass portraits let me flip this around good morning okay so those of you who watch me often are going to be familiar with this portrait this is my great great grandmother um, I have a portrait hanging in my home, and it is a bubble glass portrait. Now, what that means is if you look at it from the side, you can see how the glass is curved. Um, it's not a standard, just flat photo frame. For example, I've got my wedding photo over here, and if you look at that, then you, know, you can see that you can't see the glass at all. Um, so that's the number one way to tell if you've got a bubble glass portrait. They're pretty easy to recognize. So the question is, why do some portraits have this fishbowl bubble glass? And how do you take care of that? And how do you get something like that into your notebook? So talking about bubble glass portraits, these were popular for a while. So this is not like super easy to date just because... It isn't, you know, some photo types were only really popular for 10 years or less. These were popular for about 40 years, uh, like 1880 to 1920-ish. Although you get some, you know, they were still kind of a novelty. People saw them in their parents' house, so you do get some portraits that are later. And what the deal was is you'd get this big portrait. You can get smaller ones, but this is actually a really, like, standard size. Here, this is my hand for comparison. And... Um, you know, you'd hang it in your home and it, they were kind of this, um, they were a photograph, but they had this like dreamy quality to them. And we'll talk about why in a second, but you can see as I'm trying to show you this bubble portrait that I purchased, which is not part of my family tree. Um, you can see the reflection of my bookshelf. If I lean over it, look, you can see me. Hello. So this is sort of the problem is you take a photo and you're getting all of this other noise. Now I have taken photos of this portrait without taking it apart and I just sort of took it took them at angles I took them I made sure that there was like a black I basically put hung up a black cloth so that there was nothing to really reflect took pictures and then I used photo editing software to sharpen the image and I've been using that as this woman's portrait image because I don't have any other photos of my great-great-grandmother from this age um but yes they are a pain in the neck so one of the things you can do is you can take them apart. Dun, dun, dun. Little did you guys know that you were tuning in to watch me destroy some family history. Well, not really destroy, but we'll get to that in a second. At least I hope I'm not going to destroy it. Let's talk about this more before I pull out the, uh, the tools. Okay, so I said we were going to talk about the dreamy quality of these photos. Well, the deal is these are actually photographs, but they've got a softness to them. This one's actually a little bit sharper, which makes me think it's a little bit newer. But the one of my great great grandmother was done um, probably fairly close to 1880 or 1890. And it does have a softness to it that actually made me think that it was a drawing when I was growing up. I didn't even realize that this was somebody in my family, by the way. So if you have one of these hanging, make sure that you're telling me the younger relatives, you know, this is not just art, this is an actual photograph. My grandparents had a lot of Chinese themed art in their house, you know, Phoenix scrolls and pandas and stuff like that. And I kind of just thought this was one of those. Um, well, the deal is, here's some that have been un, unframed. When photographers took photos, the photos were very light. And then either you just got a light photo, which you don't see a lot of those surviving, or for a small fee, the photographer would actually go over it in charcoal. So if you look closely here, you can see that this is a photograph, but this man's features have been enhanced in an artistic way. I mean, this is damage, but the darkening of the eyes here, sort of the enhancement of, it's kind of like upping the contrast, but you know, in a really old fashioned way, you can see um, charcoal lines have been added to the, the suit pockets and stuff. And as a result, the portrait is much more crisp. 
Um, then if you're looking at, you know, if you look at his beard hairs, you can see how much detail is lost. And then that, that's been added back in using charcoal, which does give it kind of a dreamy airbrushed quality. It can also, um, I mean, airbrushing is probably the closest way to talk about the fact that this is an enhancement. So these portraits are a little dishonest, not dishonest, but you know what I mean? Like they were able to make people a little more attractive to make their eyes a little more vibrant, make their lips a little bit bigger. Um, I mean, it is still drawing on top of a photograph, so you aren't gonna get crazy uh, upgrades, but they're just not, it's not the same thing as having, you know, a snapshot these days. So we've got this one and then we have another photograph here and you can see the same softness the same charcoal um, enhancements. And then her outfit, well, and his too, but it just sort of blends down into nothing, which adds to this, you know, vignette, this dreamy quality. So obviously these ones are not in glass. I purchased this set of portraits um, pretty much for this video, but because I was curious, uh, I wanted to see if I could identify these people and reunite them. I also wanted to see what it would be like to actually take one of these bubble glass portraits apart. So we're going to do that live in a second. Um, everybody who's cringing, feel free to share your angst in the comments. Uh, interestingly, if you flip this around, this actually says on the back, organ pioneer Samuel Matheny. I am trying to confirm which Samuel Matheny organ pioneer this is. Haven't had a lot of luck so far, but that's what we're gonna be talking about on Friday. And this one doesn't have anything, it doesn't have a name on the back of it, but see these big numbers? These are going to be numbers from, you know, the original maker, 1143, 1144. So obviously, in addition to the fact that these were sold together, that suggests that these were made together. So I'm assuming that this is his wife. Uh, one of the Samuel Matheny's that I found was married twice though, and there were no, I haven't been able to find portraits of him or his wives, so it would be difficult to figure out which wife it is, but I'm going to work on that and get back to you on Friday. Now, there is some damage here. You can see, because this was darkened with charcoal, this has been scuffed, the paper's been chipped. Hers is in better condition, but when you flip them over, um, this is damage from dirt slash mildew. Uh, when it's on paper, we call this foxing and it's not a good thing. So I don't know where the frames were st uh, stored. It's possible the frames were in really bad condition. Maybe they broke. If you've got things like this that are just sitting on the floor or they're leaning up against things because the glass is out further than the frame, these break all the time. And you can find restoration people who will replace the frame for you or who will help you restore the original image. But you know, it's a little bit pricey. So I think a lot of people eventually, either they throw them away or they do what this family did, which is to take the portraits out and save the portraits. Although of course, I don't know when or how or what kind of family archival system has gone amok that they are in my possession um, because somebody donated them to the thrift store and now I own them. So, all right, let's pretend this is in our family tree. What are our options here? For storing this and getting this into our notebook. Now, obviously we can hang this up. It's an attractive portrait. By the way, I really think that this, these two women are related. I'm just going to throw that out there. Don't you think? I feel like I get a sense. It's so hard though. I see people posting in genealogy on the Facebook groups and the forums all the time being like, are these people related? Or do you think this is the same person? And you're looking at these photos and you're just like, I don't know. They both look human. Um, but I do feel like there's a little bit of a family resemblance. And again, these were sold as a set, but with no identifying marks on them. So, and I'm just proving on the back, um, there is a, a, um, framing instruction. And that's the only thing that's on the back here. So, uh, let's say that we have this in the family. I don't want to hang it up. Let's say I've inherited this and I don't know who this is. Okay. Or we could say, I know who this is, but I don't know how to photograph it. Now, honestly, if I knew who this was and this was in my family, I probably wouldn't take it apart. I would do what I did with that portrait. I would hang some black fabric to reduce the glare and the reflections, and then I would just photograph it as best I could because attempting to take this apart could potentially ruin it. Now, the thing about convex bubble portraits is that when they first started, the photograph was actually against the glass, like it's adhered to the glass. So if the glass breaks or you try to take it apart, it'll ruin the photograph. 
these ones you can see they're just printed on like basically cardboard and I can tell that that's also how this is printed because I can look from the side and you see that well it's kind of hard to tell but the the portrait is not up against the glass incidentally um, my great-great-grandmother's is also not against the glass so I should be able to take this out of the frame if I take it out of the frame what are the positives well it'll be easier to photograph It'll be easier to store if I've got this one and these two. I can put all three, you know, into a large folder or somewhere. I mean, you know, I can store them flat. I can put them in a box. I would probably separate them with parchment paper or something, uh, tissue paper because of the foxing, but those will be easier to store versus this large oval glass thing. It's just that I do risk damaging the photo and, you know, wouldn't really be able to undo it. The other reason um, that I might want to take this apart it'd be if I don't know who this is and then I'm looking for information it's possible that there is uh, artist information on the back it's possible there's even an order name or maybe somebody wrote who this was and then had the photo framed that's like that's what we're really hoping for right that's the the gold mine for genealogists that's what we're going to look for and yes I'm going to unframe this photo right now okay so we're gonna flip this over I try really hard to not break this glass because on many levels I don't want to deal with that today. Um, you can say you see it's paper backed. I can just rip this but I actually got a utility knife because I want to cut it um, just because I don't feel like I want to destroy anything inside. Um, and it's funny even as I say this I'm like I can hear there are people out there who'd be like I feel like destroying would happen with cutting and not with ripping but I'm going to try. So you guys are going to just hang out with me for a second. All right, everybody wish me luck. Okay, and I got a utility knife. Do I know how to open this? This is my husband's. Oh, man, I actually don't know how to open this. Do I? Oh, no, here. My husband has one of those utility knives that like suggests that he's a lot more outdoorsy than he actually is. I like my nice little, oh, is it this one? Yeah, I like my nice little razor blades that aren't this fancy, but okay. Uh, I'm just gonna start at the top. There's a, a ridge here where the paper is obviously like attached to the frame and then it's not. So I'm going to cut around the inside of the frame and we're going to see what we find. This is one of those things where, you know, if it was spooky season, I would be legitimately worried that an entire family of spiders was about to jump out at me, but probably not going to happen. I don't know how many of you were here for that day that I got a Bible and opened it up and hair fell out. It was not a good day in my life. Um, I still have that Bible. I should do a video about that one too. Okay, I don't feel like I'm cutting anything that needs to not be cut. who are just tuning in are like, why is she cutting up family history? So I'm out of control. All right. Honestly, nobody needs this much utility knife. How do you go on? Okay. Let's see. I cut, there's like a couple places where it's still attached, but I cut this oval of paper out of this frame. Everybody cross your fingers for two full names preferably with birth dates. It's almost like portrait artists weren't concerned about genealogists when they were doing these things. Uh, no names, no birth dates. Well, it was a long shot. The good news is that this is very clean paper. The bad news is that you can see it's just an image attached to cardboard and there's nothing on here. There's not even a sketched pencil number or anything. I'm gonna flip these tabs up. And we're gonna take this out, but I, oh, ouch. I have no hope that there's gonna be any more information if I take this out, but let's, let's see what this, picture looks like outside of the frame and then we can look at the frame really quick. Oh, you're stuck to the glass. That is 
incredibly annoying. Why are you stuck to the glass? You're taped to the glass. That's what this is. They've taped this to the front, to the glass part. Blah. Um, so do I have to cut, I have to cut this free? Well, that's obnoxious. All right, hold on. On today's Facebook genealogy chat, Carly struggles with a portrait that probably isn't going to give up any information anyway. All right. So move this. Okay, see, now I have this incredibly, this got actually more annoying. It's like a more fragile, still annoying to, to store piece of art. Man, every inch of this is taped. You're gonna come apart, yeah, okay. I was just making sure I wasn't gonna cut it and then it was gonna be stuck to the glass anyways. sound. By the way, at this point, I mean, unless I wanted to store this, I really wouldn't be taking it apart this much. <clears throat> I'm mostly taking it apart because so that we can look at it for the video and to um, potentially store it flat. I don't know that I'm going to put it back in the frame. I don't know that like it's the thing, if I can't reunite this, there's no reason for me to try to really preserve it. Um, I mean, I could preserve the photo, but without identification, and since it's not in my family, this isn't gonna be something that I store long-term. Okay, took that off, that was obnoxious. So, let's see, convex piece of glass, the tape around the edge. It's got some boxing rocks on the inside, but this portrait's actually in pretty good shape. Okay, and now I have a nice flat portrait that would be easier to store. Putting my razor blade away. So if I don't do it now, I will forget. All right. So, oh, that's up my nose. Okay, so a nice vibrant portrait. If we were to really look at this one, this one doesn't look the same kind of charcoal enhanced. It looks like the actual photo was this vibrant, which makes me think that this is newer rather than older. I actually was going to try to date this photo. It's a little tough. The, the typical clues, her hairstyle, her neckline, um, his necktie and things like that. In a funny way, this couple is so classic that these could be new styles, which would indicate one decade and then like just kind of an old fashioned throwback, you know, it's not necessarily a style of dress that's still popular, but she always felt good at it. And <laughs> that could be a whole 10 years later. So it's tough to date stuff like that. We can talk about that more on Friday, but anyway, I don't see the same kind of um, charcoal, charcoal enhancements here. This is in comparison, let's, let's get the woman's portrait out. See, this is a much softer image with very obvious artistic enhancements and then here you have um you know it's not pixelation but you can actually see much more of the shadow and things like that that would have been created in photography it's possible their irises look really dark to me but it doesn't actually even as i get closer it doesn't look like charcoal because see how they're flecked whereas this is a solid dark you know i don't know maybe it's too hard to see over the video Anyway, well, that was not, I was really hoping for names, didn't happen, but now at least I have three flat portraits to work with, and on Friday we'll talk about getting these people identified, whether or not we can, if I can't get them identified, what do we do with them? If this was really in my family, but I had no idea who these people were, am I beholden to save this portrait, and if I'm not, what do I do with it? So that's Friday's topic, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you then.